Welcome. I want to speak briefly today about the harmonic series, and there's a wonderful paradox that arises from it, which I'll get to in a moment. First of all, the harmonic series is an infinite sum. It's a sum 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth plus a sixth, and so on. Uh, the name harmonic series actually comes from Pythagoras. Uh, the story goes that when visiting a blacksmith's shop, he noticed that uh, metal bars, when tapped, vibrate and make a lovely note. And when two bars are tapped simultaneously, the two notes they, sa they produce uh, make a harmonious sound if their lengths come in whole number ratios. So these ratios, 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, are the fundamental ratios. You can do other ratios as well um, to deal with harmonious notes. And this series then became known as the harmonic series. Um, one thing that people have noticed about it actually has a very peculiar property that if you were a human that could exist beyond time and got out your calculator and actually add up, added up the sum forever, um, it turns out to be infinite in value. Uh, let me quickly prove that to you. Uh, it's one of these standard results from calculus, but the, there are many proofs out there. I kind of like what I'm about to do next. Um, I think it's kind of swift. Let's give the sum a name. Let's call it S. And I'll prove that if S is a finite number, it has a very strange property that can't possibly hold, leaving me to conclude that S must be infinite. All right, so if S is the sum of the series, then S will be bigger than a half plus a half, because one is bigger than half, plus a quarter plus a quarter, because a third is bigger than a quarter, plus a six plus a six, because a fifth is bigger than a six, plus an eighth plus an eighth, and so on. So S is bigger than the second sum. But what is the second sum? Half plus half is one plus a quarter plus a quarter, which is a half, plus a six plus a six is a third, plus an eighth plus an eighth is a fourth, which is the sum again. So we have just proved that the value of the sum s is bigger than the value of the sum s. Well, s can't be a finite number. There's no finite number that is bigger than itself. So the only thing I can include in that this is not finite and it must be dealing with some sort of infinite property. And then there's another little paradox right there. What does it mean to say infinity is bigger than infinity? However, at the very least, I can say it's not finite. All right. So the fact that this sum adds up to an infinite quantity leads to a gorgeous paradox, which is really quite bizarre. Let me get rid of the squiggle as well. Um, in another video, I discuss something called, whoops, I need my pen, the Basel problem. And in the 1700s, Euler proved that actually, if you take the sum and square its terms, one plus a fourth plus a ninth plus a sixteenth plus a twenty-fifth and so on, that actually adds up to a finite value. It's pi squared over 6. So it's about 9 over 6, about one, about 1 and a half. Now that's amazing. And I actually do prove it in detail in this video, so go have a look at the Basel problem video to see this, tru this truth. So what I'd like to do now is give a geometric interpretation of this, which has a geometric interpretation of this first one, the harmonic series, within it. Here goes. This first one in the Basel series, I'm going to draw a square of area 1 totally possible. There it is. Of course, it's side length. It's going to be 1. Oops. Next to that, I'll draw a square of area quarter. And of course, its side length will be a half. And now I'll draw a square of area 1 ninth. Its side length will be 1 third. And the square of area 1 sixteenth, side length of 1 quarter, and 1 25th, and da 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 da. And I'll pretend I'm beyond human and can do this forever. All right. Now I'm going to get out some paint. Let me get out about, oh, I don't know, about a gallon and a half of paint. Because I know that this area, plus this area, plus this area, plus this area, plus this area, adds up to a finite amount. So actually, I can paint all those squares, fill in all the areas. There's only a finite amount of paint. Finite paint. But what the really weird thing is, if I got out a red pen and just want to draw the side, bottom sides of each of these squares, we know that this is going to be one unit of ink, plus half a unit of ink in length, I guess I'm doing length now, plus a third, plus a fourth. That is going to take an infinite amount of ink. There's my paradox. It only takes a finite amount of paint to fill in the whole area of all these squares, yet when this, when this paint touches the side of the square, it takes an infinite amount of ink to uh, actually draw the bottoms of these squares. How's that possible? How can a finite amount of paint fill an area, but require an infinite amount of paint to actually just draw the bottoms of those areas? There lies the paradox. And this is the wonderful thing that drove mathematicians nuts for centuries. This, uh, this infinite sum, there's something very mysterious about what we just go glibly do is dot, 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 just keep going forever. I guess the question really becomes, what does dot, dot, dot really mean? Because if you have to think about it carefully, you have to somehow resolve a paradox like this one. Isn't that cute? 
Thanks so much.